Buying a home is one of the largest investments you'll ever make in your lifetime. It is a long-term investment, and you want to buy a home when you are ready. Now, what are the steps to buying a home? Well, that's going to be the subject of today's video, and we're going to get started right now. Step one is preparation. Now, the first step in buying a home is going to be in preparation. You're going to need to have some money saved up. You're going to need three buckets of money. You're going to need money for down payment. You're going to need money for closing costs, and you're going to have to have some reserves. How much do you need for down payment? That's really going to depend on your financing. For many people, what they have is the false impression that in order to buy a home, you're going to need 20% down, and that's simply not true. If you're using conventional financing, you can get in for as little as 3% down payment. For a $300,000 home, that would be $9,000. If you're using FHA financing, you can get in for as little as 3.5% down payment. FHA is used for buyers who may have less than perfect credit or they have a little bit higher debt to income ratio. For a $300,000 home, that would be $10,500. If you're a veteran, then you can use VA financing. Now for VA financing, you can get in with zero down payment. And depending on your location, if you're in a rural area, then you can apply for USDA financing. And for that type of financing, you can get in with zero down payment. Your lender will work with you as to which type of financing will be best suited for you. Also, there's some down payment assistance programs out there for some first-time home buyers. What about closing costs? Now, closing costs are simply costs involved to secure the loan. Now, items such as title fees, appraisal, closing fee, inspections, and recording fees are all closing costs. And the other thing you're going to need along with closing costs is going to be to establish an escrow account. And this will be for property taxes and for homeowners insurance. Now, how much are closing costs? Closing costs typically run anywhere between 2 to 5% of the purchase price. For example, if you have a $300,000 home, you'll need anywhere up to six to $10,000 in additional funds for both closing costs, prepaids, and escrows. Now, here's the good news, especially in the market we're currently in as of recording of this video. Sometimes you can negotiate to where the seller pays the buyer's closing costs. Now, let's talk about your application for a mortgage. Now, the lender is going to look at three things. The lender is going to look at your job history, your credit score, and your debt-to-income ratio. Lenders like to see a two-year job history. Now, while you're in the process of preparing to buy a home, be very careful about changing jobs. Okay, let's talk about your credit score. Now, long story short, take care of your credit. The higher your credit score, the more options you're going to have. Pay your bills and pay your bills on time. And if you're thinking about buying a home in your future, be careful about going out there and buying that brand new car. Now, that brand new car is going to have a car payment, and that's going to vastly affect your debt to income ratio. And it could disqualify you from buying a home. So don't go out and rack up a bunch of debt. Pay things down. It's going to take some time, but it's going to be worth it. Finally, let's talk about reserve funds. Don't buy a home unless you're ready. Make sure you have enough savings set aside for maintenance. When you buy a home, you are responsible for repairs. Make sure you set enough funds aside for these repairs. Buying a home is not easy. It's going to take some preparation. That's why the home ownership rate in the United States is around 65%. And it may not be the right time for you, but that's okay. Eventually, you can work yourself into home ownership. Now, if you currently own a home, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're currently renting, don't give up hope. And if you have to clean up your credit a little bit, then go ahead and work towards it. The next step in the process is to get pre-approved with a local lender. The lender will need to get documentation from you. And it's okay to shop for lenders. Many buyers, they're afraid to shop for lenders because they're afraid it's going to have an impact on their credit score. As long as it's done within a short window period of time, it's only going to show as one inquiry on your credit score. Who should you apply with? Who are you currently banking with? They may have a mortgage department. So you want to check with whoever you're doing your current banking with. And then number two is you want to check with a local bank or a credit union or a local mortgage broker. And then if you already are working with an agent, they may have a trusted lender that they're working with. You may want to reach out to your agent. Why do I say local lender? Now, when you submit an offer, the listing agent, if they're familiar with that lender, then that's going to put your offer in a better position. Now, if you're in the Omaha area or if you're moving to Omaha, if you need help finding a lender, go ahead and hit me up. My contact information is in the description below. 
What documentation will the lender need? Now, the lender will need the following. Number one, they're going to need your current driver's license. Two, they're going to need 30 days of paycheck stubs. Three, they're going to need W-2s for the last two years from all employers. And four, they're going to need two months of bank statements where the funds for closing will be coming from. They'll also need the last two years of tax returns if you're self-employed. Now, what you can do is you can upload these documents to something like Google Drive, and then you have them readily available when you're applying with different lenders. Once you're pre-approved and you have your pre-approval letter, then you're ready to proceed to the next step. Now, before we proceed to the next step, it's kind of fun to see where people are viewing these videos from. So in the comments section, go ahead and put the city you're from in the comments below. The next step is to find a local trusted realtor. Now, where do you find them? Not all agents are created equal. You can start by asking friends and family. You can do some online reconnaissance and look for their profiles online. And you can look at Zillow and look at their Zillow reviews. And if they have a YouTube channel, you can check that out as well. You want someone with the heart of a teacher who's going to guide you and not just sell you a house. And you also want someone who's familiar with the market you're interested in. You know, for example, let's say your friend is licensed in Nebraska and they sell in Omaha, but you're buying in Scotts Bluff. You want a local agent in that market. Now, talk to your friend in Omaha because many agents have connections in other markets where they can set you up with a great agent in that market. Here's who you don't hire. Don't hire the first agent you meet. For example, let's say you're looking at Zillow and you're clicking on request a tour. Now that's going to put you in touch with an agent who is paying thousands of dollars to advertise on that site. Let's say you have a friend who is licensed, but they specialize in commercial real estate. If you're buying residential, then you want a residential real estate agent. What about just calling off the sign? Now, many buyers think they'll get a better deal if they go directly to the listing agent. That's called dual agency. Now, in my opinion, as a buyer, you want your own representation. If you're buying new construction, you can, you want your own representation. If you go to a model home, be sure you bring your agent on your first visit. The agents that are in that model home represent the builder and the builder's best interest not you, so you want your own representation. Now you have your pre-approval and you have your agent. Now it's time for the next step. Step four is going to be finding a home. Now your agent will set you up on a search for a property on the MLS. Now the MLS stands for multiple listing service. It takes all of the listings and it makes them available to all of the agents from all different firms. Now You might ask, well, why can't I just use Zillow? You can. However, many times Zillow has outdated information. That's why the MLS is a better option because your agent can set you up on a search the minute that home hits the market. Okay, you want to set realistic expectations. The perfect home does not exist. What you're looking for is a home that fits 80% of your needs. 10% can be changed and 10% you can live with. Now, if this is your first home, understand that this is a step towards your dream home down the road. Be patient, and it can be very emotionally draining and frustrating. Your home is out there. Everyone out there is going to want to give you some sort of advice. Be careful because someone who may love you and could very well want the very best for you may give you very poor advice, you know, or they're giving you outdated advice, or they purchased a home 10 years ago. So you want to be careful about that. Now, if this is your very first home, you may want to shy away from buying a foreclosure or a short sale. Why is that? Okay, number one, many times these type of properties are sold as is and the seller's not going to make any repairs. And then two, you want to look at, do you have additional funds to make those repairs? Are you skilled in those repairs? Do you have time to make those repairs? And then finally, a short sale can take up to six months to even a year to close. Now, in the world we're in right now, we don't see a lot of short sales out there. And what a short sale is, is when a seller is upside down in the loan. They owe more than what the property is worth. And those can be take a lot of time to close. So if you're a first-time home buyer, you may want to shy away from those types of properties. Once you have found a home, your realtor will help you draft the purchase agreement. This is a legally binding contract. Be sure you understand what you're signing. Read the contract. If you don't understand something, ask questions. When you write an offer, the seller has three options. The seller can accept the offer, they can reject the offer, or they can counter the offer. When you write a purchase agreement, you'll also need to provide earnest money. 
earnest money or an earnest deposit is usually somewhere around 1% of the purchase price of the home. And the earnest money shows that you're a serious buyer. If the offer is accepted, the earnest deposit check is cashed and the earnest deposit gets applied to the purchase price at closing. If the buyer and the seller agree to terms, then congratulations, your home is now in pending status. Step number six is the escrow process. Now, if you'd like a detailed explanation after the offer is accepted as to what happens next, click on the card above and I'll leave a link to another video in the description. Once the home is under contract, it is called in escrow or in pending status. Now, the lender and the title company will begin the closing process. If the buyer has elected to conduct a home inspection, in our market, the buyer has 14 days of due diligence to conduct any and all inspections. The lender is going to order an appraisal. Now, the buyer pays for the appraisal and the lender has an appraisal done to protect the lender and the buyer to make sure that the buyer is not paying more than what the property is worth. The title company does a title search to make sure that the property is free and clear of all liens and encumbrances on the title. A termite inspection is done to make sure that the property is free of wood-destroying insects. One of the conditions of the loan is the lender wants to make sure that the property is not infested with termites. While the home is in escrow, the buyer is going to order their homeowner's insurance. Now, if you're buying a home, make sure you understand the type of coverage and the policy, especially in the Omaha market with our frequent thunderstorms and hail damage to roofs. It can be a very unpleasant surprise and could mean a lot more money out of pocket if you don't order the right type of coverage. So make sure you talk to and discuss your coverage and your policy with your trusted insurance provider. Before closing, the buyer is going to contact the utility companies and transfer all the utilities into the buyer's name before closing. Now, this can take a couple of days, so you want to make sure if you're a buyer that you give yourself plenty of time and do this about a week or two before closing. While the lender is working on final loan approval, don't be surprised if the lender reaches out to you and asks for more documentation. If they ask, as a buyer, you want to move quickly and provide them with that documentation. 24 to 48 hours before closing, the buyer is going to conduct what they call a final walkthrough. The house should be broom clean, and if the buyer has requested any repairs, the seller should provide the buyer with any paid invoices showing that the work has been completed. The walkthrough is to ensure compliance with the purchase agreement. A day or two before closing, you're going to get final numbers from the title company and or the lender for closing. Review these numbers carefully, and if you're buying, you'll need to bring a cashier's check to closing along with a current government-issued ID. Step seven is closing day. Now, closing is an exciting day. Now, finally, the day has arrived, and there's several important details about closing you need to know. Now, if you want to hear all that happens on closing day, hey, be sure to watch this next video, and you make it a great day.